welcome to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast, dedicated to exploring the interesting journeys of the people in the provincial construction industry. Presented by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association, produced by Gale Force Winds. Join us as we chat with the inspirational individuals that ensure the continued growth of the construction industry and the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. And welcome to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast, day two, and I can tell you it's been an exciting day, wonderful conversations. I'm Alan Dale, with me as always, my good buddy, Jerry Carew. Paul, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Paul Shelley. I'm from Baybert, Newfoundland. That's my hometown. Uh, I was uh, grew up there, and I became their MHA in 1993 at, okay. a, at a young age of 32. I spent uh, 14 years, four terms uh, in government. Uh, my last uh, four years involved a bunch of portfolios from tourism, human resources, labor, employment, housing, immigration. So it was a bunch of things. So uh, yeah, I had uh, four good terms, uh, what I consider four good terms in government. And now I'm an entrepreneur and in the business world. Well, that's a bit of a shift, right? <laughs> Going from representing your community and all of the, uh, the challenges and the privilege yes. with that. Uh, now starting your own business. So tell us a little bit about Work Global. Yeah, Work Global is an interesting uh, evolution, let's put it that way. So in my last term in, in government, one of my portfolios was immigration. And of course, at the time, people like to say I predicted, but it wasn't a prediction, it was about statistics. So at the time, in 2003, 2004, there was no immigration department, there was no immigration strategy. As a matter of fact, there was a one staffer at the, in, in the Confederation Building for Immigration. Wow. So from that and uh, with the, at the time Premier Williams, uh, the vision was that, you know, with the statistics that we had, and I always remember these even though it was a few years back now, uh, that Newfoundland had the most aging population, most baby boomers per capita of a half million people in North America, not just Canada. So with that in mind, and also an, an interesting statistic was that we had the most out migration of young people, 20 to 25 year olds. So with those two combinations, I had predicted at that time that we need an immigration strategy because by 2021, 22, which is now with our demographics, we would be in desperate need of people in this province. And of course it's, it's turning out to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very simple math. And at the time I brought in the immigration strategy to try to help we brought a department to a, a probably 18 to 20 staff, we gave it a budget, and we started this immigration strategy in 06, uh, which I was glad to be part of. I learned a lot at that time. And of course, then I left government just a couple of years later, and uh, I got involved with the, uh, a partner of mine, a business partner, Wanda Cuff Young, who was interested in immigration at the time, saw what I had done in government. She said, uh, we should do something with this. And so we started this business 10 years ago. Oh, wow. And of course it was flat, flat, flat. And nobody believed it would ever go anywhere. And I said, hold on. I remembered the timing of 21, 22 and so on. And right now we're a thriving business. We just expanded. We expanded into New Brunswick a month ago. We're going into Nova Scotia within weeks and we're actually growing. So tell us exactly what the business does. So we do the whole immigration process and recruiting. Okay. So the whole thing, so we job seeker uh, employers come to us. We have a fantastic network that we've built over the last 10 years. We're in some 70, 80 countries across the world. Uh, we speak about 12 different languages now at our office. We've grown to a staff of about 40. Uh, mostly immigrants that have gone through the process and so know it quite well. And believe me, we've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from being a Minister of Immigration to what actually means today. And so it's very simply that we need people. So, uh, Paul, walk me through the steps. So if I'm a person, let's say I'm in Sri Lanka and I want to come to Canada, uh, do I get in touch with you and you help me through that process? Well, we actually, it's the other way around. We get in touch. So okay. we'll find job seekers here from this uh, convention the weekend. Right. Let's take one company comes and say, I need five welders. They come to us 
we go through our network, we go through our agents all over the world, Philippines, Mauritius, we're all over the world. Mm -hmm. And we find a suitable candidate that fits that NOC code, which is a code of the description of the employee. Okay. And then if, if that fits, then we get the, we start the whole process right from an, uh, an employee, employer uh, interview. Right. And then we start to collect all the documents and we would do, besides finding that uh, employee, we do the whole process right from the day that they start with their documents right up to when they land and so on. So you help the potential employee from a foreign country go through the whole immigration process to get to the point where they're working with that company. Exactly. Wow. And the big challenge in Newfoundland, like it is across the country, by the way, we're finding the same thing. It's it, We need so much education when it comes to employers, and uh, this is a constructive criticism, but they right. tell me their self. Yeah. So the, when they see presentations about immigration, they just get set back and say, wow, this is complicated. And it is complicated, but it is also simple. Right. Now, that's a bit confusing, but it is the technical points of the whole process can be confusing. Yeah. So that's where we come in. It's like uh, you know going to buy a house yourself without using real estate. You know how it can get confusing. Well, it's even more so with immigration. Right. Some employers have tried it, tried to do it in house, but the truth is it's so specific, and the. Uh, what you need to process all of those things is very specific, so yeah. we come in there. Paul, I often describe things like that, like IKEA furniture. The first one's a little complicated, <laughs> the second one gets a little easier. By the time you put together that 10th yeah. chair, you're yeah. pretty good at it. That's and, a good analogy. Right, and that's probably where you are yeah, right absolutely. now. Paul, what is the connection with the NLCA? Are you a member of the NLCA? So we have been, and I uh, believe we still are now, but we've done so many things in the last couple of years. I've dealt with construction. I've had my own construction company in Labrador, so very familiar with it. I'm very familiar with what their, what their needs are. And we make it very clear for construction industry or any industry, from Tim Hortons workers to constructions to IT, we do everything now, including medical, by the way, now, nurses, doctors, so on. So we do the whole gamut. And we basically lead them through those processes so that we know that down the road, we tell them to be proactive. If you need a worker next week, it's no good to come to us. Right. Yeah. You gotta come a year before, year and a half, and start that process yeah. so that when you need 10 in two years from now, then you're already in the system. Right, and of course the uh, Construction Association, they're on long lead projects many times, Absolutely. so they can project that thing. So it's a real nice match yeah. between what they're doing and what you're doing. Absolutely. The value of being involved with these guys has to be immense for you. It shows you all kinds of uh, opportunities for people. Fantastic, and I've had some great discuss discussions with uh, the private sector and construction industry as a whole, and they know, and I know what their needs are. Yeah. coming down the road we're not talking about next week or next month and remember something else too as a as a company as a as a local newfoundland owned company newfoundland labrador owned company we have a simple policy first of all we go strictly by the books because there are a lot of immigration problems out there around the world so we stick by the books we do it exactly what we're supposed to be doing sometimes it takes a bit longer because of that but we do it right right and we know that the construction industry with the projects that are coming we have a lot of retirees in every sector nursing teachers construction industry is no different right so we got a lot of retirees coming next two three four five years next five years are going to be tight in, new mm -hmm. in every sector so that's why we're telling them be proactive but we're very simple simple on this we go local first right in the province as a matter of fact locally in the town that we're in then we go to province, then we go national across Canada, then we go to immigration. Right. So we search every facet yeah. before we move on to the immigration process. Oh, uh, I gotta ask you, you know, you're saying you were 10 years, so there was a period of years where you weren't certain this, this, this business was, was not flourishing, I guess. Yeah. But in the last few years, the vision has come to be. How does that make you feel? You and Wanda started this, and now you got 40 employees. Yeah, well, I tell you, it's a great feeling, to be honest with you, because Wanda, i got to say, you know, we've stuck together. We've known each other since university days. We've been good personal friends for years. So when we bumped into each other, we said, you know, this is the vision. She saw the immigration strategy, saw the numbers. And I said, it's about math. And to be honest with you, in my political days, when I brought this out as a minister, I was criticized heavily, publicly, for bringing in the immigrants. And yeah. that would take away Newfoundlander jobs and Labradorians jobs. I said, no, no, it's going to enhance that. So, right. And it was about math at the time, like I told you. We weren't borning the children. No. I'm from a family of 12. That's not happening anymore. No. So the truth is, with the math alone, we needed it. And if we're going to grow as a province, we need a population. But you're right. As a matter of fact, the first five years, we were flat. Wow. 
We never lost money. No. But as any company would tell you, that's not good. We, we weren't gaining. But in the last year before the COVID and since, which is right on target with my dates of 2021, where the real squeeze would start, uh, retiring in this province, that we started to grow and now we're growing fast. So you're flat for five years. What yeah. keeps you going? Well, you know, it was, a, it was a belief of what I said from day one. I told Wanda that it would take time and people will see it. But it's one of those longevity. Usually you start a business, you hopefully two or three years, you're turning around and making profit. I said, it's not gonna happen. So we predicted this from the beginning, just from what I had, the information we had, which is that by 2021, 20, 22. Wow. It's amazing, Paula. You know, it's one thing, belief doesn't translate to money in the bank, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> so a lot of people didn't believe in the first place, but we hung in there. Yeah, well, I tell you, I've interacted with several of your um, employees, and I can tell there's a spirit there, there's oh, an optimism, the there's hope, there is. And, uh, kudos to Wanda. Wanda's doing a lot in the community. I actually serve on a board with her, the Lymphoma Society. Yes. Really nice to have you on the podcast today. Uh, I just want to mention one thing, if yes. I could. Uh, so the third, there is a third partner. And is it's, it's an interesting one. It's Dr. Brian Ramjatton, who's oh, yeah. been a longtime friend of mine. Of course, his immigration background and so on. So he was always interested in that and came on board with us as a partner a few years back because of his, his own experience and his information and, of course, his knowledge. And so we've made a really good combination, me being a former minister, Brian with his experience, Wanda with all what she did and learning the process. So it makes for a real good combination. Wow. Yeah. Paul, thanks very much for the conversation. I have to tell you, uh, it was wonderful to hear and your excitement for this is, uh, is very genuine and you can feel it. It's wonderful. Thank you for the service that you've gave to Newfoundland and Labrador as a politician, but I would argue your service continues as you grow this business and bring newcomers to our province and indeed our region, as you have rightly pointed out that you're now in all of Atlantic Canada. Mm -hmm. Wish you much success. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Building Newfoundland and Labrador podcast. Presented by the Newfoundland and Labrador Construction Association. Produced by Gale Force Winds.